How do railway modellers have some fun after five months of isolation and lockdown? You gather at your club, bring your own food and have a barbecue while socially distancing as you play with your trains. For all you subscribers who have been watching my model rail videos over the last few months, I'd like to show you another side to the railway modelling that I do. If you're new to my channel, become a subscriber and don't forget the bell icon to be notified of new content. I'm a member of the Scottish Model Engineering Trust, which is based at Wester Pixton in Perthshire, Scotland. Our club incorporates in a seven acre site extensive multi-gauge ground level tracks with a thriving model railway group to create a home for miniature railway excellence. Let me show you some of our site and the sort of models and activities our members get up to. The Model Railway Club Room always has several layouts available for members to run their trains. During the day, members ran their trains on a variety of layouts in double O and N gauge. Outside in the steaming bays, engines were being prepared for a day's running. Steam locomotives can take up to half an hour to get up to steam. Boilers need to be filled, fires lit and moving parts oil. Once up to pressure, a loco is moved onto the turntable, ready to run. If you're wondering why the trains run on a track with three rows, it's because the track can accommodate two different gauges. The two outer rails are seven and a quarter inch, whilst five inch gauge locos run on the inner rails. This makes for interesting point work. An interesting new locomotive was brought to the site for early running trials. I'll let Roger Spears, the builder, explain how it is built. The engine's a 110cc uh, motorcycle engine. It's, uh, it's called a pit bike engine because it's become popular for building little motorcycles for uh, racing around in uh, racing circuit pits. It's quite a good engine uh, for this application because it's, it's got a starter motor attached to it, it's 12 volt electrics uh, and it has a stator so you can generate some power with it. Altogether uh, I'm finding it a really satisfactory engine. Um, it's very similar to the Honda motorbike engine, small motorbike engine. What's the object at the back there? Well, there's uh, a little uh, gearbox at the back, a reversing gearbox, which is necessary for, for a, a railway locomotive. Obviously, you have to go in two directions. Uh, it's something, another off-the-shelf item, which is produced for go-karts. Um, it's meant to be good enough for up to about 11 horsepower. 
uh, which should hopefully handle the engine power, which is about seven and a half. The the long bar you've got there, what's that? Uh, what's that do? Well, I had to cobble together some kind of uh, system for being able to reverse the reversing gearbox. Um, it has the the two positions and a, a neutral position in the centre. It's not the most, the most satisfactory way of doing it, but uh, it can be reached from the driver's seat. Um, the only downside of it is the fact that uh, with it being basically a crash gearbox, it is necessary to stop the engine to change direction, but uh, it appears to work quite well. But uh, to me, chain and sprockets was the simplest way to go. The only problem with that is that uh, bogies, as it's necessary, they have to pivot on a curve. Uh, and to achieve that, I've used a pivot underneath the engine, uh, concentric with the, the bogey pivot, uh, and had to try and uh, figure out ways of building little frames that would uh, hold the various components together and guide the engine from the bogey. Uh, I had to build in a flexible exhaust pipe uh, because the, the tailbox is attached to the bodywork. Various other things too, cabling, uh, hoses and uh, control cables because the engine moves around. That's, that's really just been the basis uh, of the, the, the design and the way that the engine bay is laid out. Uh, other spaces that were left are used for uh, the braking system and uh, a horn. So what controls do you have in, the, in, the, in your, your cab in your sitting position? Uh, a fairly basic uh, selector lever using Bowden cables. Uh, onto the side of the engine where you would normally have a, a foot pedal for selecting gears uh, and a simple throttle arrangement again with a Bowden cable going to the carburetor. Those are the only real links to the engine. Um, another feature of this engine is the fact that uh, it has contacts on the engine which if you link up to lights give you gear position. At the moment it's showing that the engine's in top gear being a four speed box and neutral um, this is because it's got so much torque it will actually pick away in top gear without any trouble. Um, changing the ratios with the sprockets would possibly give an even higher top speed, um, but uh, having it in top gear all the time gives quite a good takeoff and uh, a good smooth uh, ride for the passengers. So I think I possibly would leave it the way it is. So what about braking? What have you got for braking? The brakes, I've, I've used a, a car um, brake boost pump, vacuum boost pump, but because of the limited space for my knees under this panel, uh, I've used um, solenoids, electric solenoids that operate the brake system. These can be seen on, on the side of the, the collection of parts there. Uh, the chrome items are actually solenoids for uh, truck air horns. Um, these appear to work quite satisfactorily, except for I have a, a leak somewhere where I'm losing some vacuum and I need to trace that to, to finish off the system to make it uh, really quite a good system to use. And what's it like to drive? How easy is it to drive? It's, it's easy enough except for the throttle uh, because the transmission doesn't have any kind of uh, cushioning system in it. Um, so a bit of care is required to operate the throttle smoothly. Um, other than that, it uh, gives quite a good, a good ride. I hope you enjoyed the day out at West of Pixton, despite the restrictions for the pandemic. Click on the playlist to watch more Model Railway content. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you there.